This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. We are now going to examine writing as a language technology, specifically focusing on the fact that conventions assign meaning to symbols. In the absence of human conventions, symbols do not possess inherent meaning. We're specifically going to look at a number of symbols and explore what those symbols mean in various contexts. We're going to begin with the hand gesture shown here. A hand gesture where the right hand has the thumb and index finger forming a circle. Take a moment and consider, what does this symbol mean? Are you familiar with it? If so, what context or contexts? And what meaning does this symbol have in those contexts? Perhaps the most common usage of this symbol, at least in the United States, is to mean OK, or everything's all right. This symbol gained this meaning through conventional usage beginning in the 19th century and continuing into the 20th and 21st centuries. This symbol is also used as a hand gesture in the context of scuba diving, where it has the same conventional meaning. Okay, everything's all right. However, in some other countries, this symbol has a very different conventional usage. Specifically, it has meaning as a very profane insult. Since 2017, various white supremacist groups have begun using this symbol to indicate their support for white supremacy. Let's next look at a different symbol, a circle with a red outline, a blue center, and a red strike through the center. Have you ever seen this symbol? If so, where? What did it mean in that context? While this symbol is not commonly found in the United States, in many countries, this is a conventional symbol meaning no parking. So in the context of driving and traffic, this symbol means you can't park here. It's not allowed. Here we see five related symbols, all of them circles, all of them with the number 30 written inside the circle. What do these symbols mean? Let's start with the one on the far right, a blue circle with the number 30 written in white. In many countries, this symbol is a traffic sign. Specifically, it indicates that there is a minimum speed limit in effect of 30 kilometers per hour. The next symbol is the same blue circle, white 30, but with a red slash through the circle. In many countries, this is also a traffic sign indicating an end to the minimum speed limit zone. So this symbol, with the 30 and the slash through it, indicates the end to a minimum speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour. The next symbol is a circle with a red outline, white center, the number 30 in black in the center, and the number 30 is underlined in black. This is a country-specific traffic sign. You might find this sign in South Korea, but it's likely that you might not find it in the United States or Europe. 
this, this symbol in that context, South Korea, indicates a minimum speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour. So the same as the first circle we discussed. Next, we have a circle with a red outline, a white center, and the number 30 in black. In many countries, this sign indicates a maximum speed limit. So if this sign occurred on the side of a road, it would indicate that for this stretch of road, there is a maximum speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour. The final of these five symbols is a circle with a gray outline, white center, 30 in gray in the center, and a series of black strikes through the circle. This indicates, in the appropriate context, an end to the maximum speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour. Finally, let's look at three symbols that are visually nearly identical. The first symbol on the left is the Latin capital letter B. This letter in the Unicode encoding scheme has a code point of 0042. In the context of the language Latin, when Latin is written, the Latin capital letter B represents the sound B. That is the conventional meaning assigned to this symbol in the context of written Latin. We're now going to explore a number of other contexts. In the context of written English, the Latin capital letter B has the same conventional meaning as it does in Latin, B the sound B. There are quite a number of languages that use the Latin alphabet that also have this meaning for the Latin capital letter B, including German, B. In Scottish Gaelic, this symbol has a different pronunciation. So in the context of written Scottish Gaelic, the Latin capital letter B has the sound p, p, instead of b, b. So in Gaelic, the convention is that capital letter B represents p. Let's move to the second of the three symbols, visually indistinguishable at least in this font, from the Latin capital letter B. Here, we have the Greek capital letter beta. The Greek capital letter beta in the Unicode character encoding scheme has a code point of 0392. In the context of written modern Greek, that is, the Greek language spoken in Greece today, the conventional sound assigned to this symbol is V, V. Contrast that with the sound of this symbol in Ancient Greek. So in written Ancient Greek, the capital letter beta represents the sound B, B. Third, we have the Cyrillic capital letter V. Again, the Cyrillic capital letter V, at least in this font, is visually indistinguishable from the Latin capital letter B and the Greek capital letter beta. The Cyrillic capital letter V has a Unicode code point of 0412. In written Russian, this symbol, Cyrillic capital letter V, 
has the conventional meaning of the sound the, the. Other languages also use the Cyrillic alphabet, including Mongolian. So in written Mongolian, the Cyrillic capital letter V has the meaning W, W. In written Ukrainian, the conventional meaning assigned to this letter, Cyrillic capital letter V, depends on the context. In some contexts, it could be V, and in other contexts, it could be W. So we've looked at a number of languages and seen how these three symbols, which all happen to look alike, have different meaning in different languages. But there are many other contexts outside of written language use that use some of these symbols. We're going to now look at several uses of the Latin capital letter B for non-linguistic representation. In the American educational system, the Latin capital letter B represents a passing grade, better than the grade C, worse than the grade A. In the context of the class, Ling270, for which this recording was made, in the semester that this recording was made, the Latin capital letter B has a more specific meaning with regard to grading. It represents a passing grade greater than or equal to 83.0%, less than 87%. In the context of chemistry, the Latin capital letter B represents the chemical element boron. In the context of computer science, Latin capital letter B represents a byte, which is a unit of information storage equivalent to 8 bits. In the context of acoustics, the Latin capital letter B represents a bell, which is a unit of sound volume. We have seen in going through these symbols that convention assigns meaning to symbols. All symbol systems depend on conventions for meaning. 